Grade 12 Physics, Fields Note Number 1, Coulomb's Law. This will be the start of our next unit in which we'll look at electric, gravitational, and magnetic fields and how they can put forces on particles um, depending on what kind of particles they are. Basically, to start off, fields are a way we can exert a force at a distance. Normally, two things have to be in contact if they're going to exert a force, but here we can exert a force on a charged particle even if it's separated from something else by a distance. So the three fields that we're going to study, first one's gravitational field, which actually we've taken a look at quite a bit already. Um, if we, we can calculate the force of gravity on an object, we can figure out how much it's going to accelerate. Also, um, if we lift something above the Earth's surface, we can find a gravitational potential energy. So all th concepts that we're familiar with already. We're also going to look at magnetic fields. This is something we saw, sort of saw in grade 11. Magnetic fields come from something magnetic. In this case, we're drawing a magnet. The field lines are vectors, and they always come out of the north, and they go into the south. The last type of fields we're going to look at in this unit are electric fields. Electric fields we deal with positive and negatively charged objects like protons and electrons. Again here, lines will come out of a proton and go into electrons or out of something positively charged and into something negatively charged. All fields um, obey the inverse square law, which means as you get further and further away from a charged object, the field will get weaker and weaker according to 1 over r squared. And this is the same with a magnetic field as well. This is something we already saw with gravity and Newton's law. So actually to calculate the force in an electric field, we're actually going to compare it to force in a gravitational field. We know how to calculate that from Newton's universal law of gravity. So that's Fg equals m gmm over r squared. Coulomb's law is the name we give to the electric force whenever we feel a repulsion between two particles or an attraction between two particles. This is K multiplied by the two charges on the particles divided by their separation squared. So very similar to Newton's gravitational law. If we look a little more closely at the formula, here force is always going to be in Newtons. Q, which is the charge in the particles, will be in Coulombs, so that's a capital C for a unit. R is the separation distance in meters. And K is our new constant here, Coulombs constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. If we check the units on this, we'll see that left side is a Newton, and right side, when we put everything else in, it'll also simplify to be a Newton as well. So it's a, this is an interesting formula because electric fields are not like, magnet, or not like gravitational fields because gravitational fields are only attractive. Electric fields can be attractive and repulsive. So if we actually look at the two charges of the particles that are feeling an attraction or a repulsion, if the charges are opposite, meaning one positive and one negative, those two will fo uh, feel an attractive force. So opposite signs, which will give us a negative answer for force, will give means attractive. If they're the same signs, we will get a positive answer for force, and that will be repulsive. Let's do an example here. Let's determine the separation of two charges, where the first charge is negative 8 microcoulombs, and the second charge is positive 50 microcoulombs. Let's say they experience a force of 0 0.5 newtons. So one thing we have to note first is we're dealing in microcoulombs. We have to convert that back to coulombs. A microcoulomb is 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So our first charge ends up being negative 8 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And our second charge ends up being 50 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So we did those conversions, and we also remember we're given a force. So let's use Coulomb's law here, rearrange the equation for a radius, and solve for what we need. So here's a rearrangement. We're going to put our numbers in, so we'll put Coulomb's constant in, 9 times 10 to the 9. We'll put each of the charges in, and we'll divide it by 0.5. Now notice here, the charges have opposite signs, so we know they're going to feel an attraction. 
But if actually we did the math, we would get a negative under the square root, because one of them is negative, one of them is positive. We just need to simply remember here that if they're oppositely charged, we get an, an attraction, okay? Otherwise, we'll just do the math and find out the value that we need. Second example here, um, it's not one-dimensional anymore. Let's say we have three charges on the corner of an equilateral triangle. So according to this diagram, we have A, B, and C, B being at the right angle. The distance between A and B is going to be 0.3 meters. The distance between B and C is going to be 0.2 meters. And the charges on each of these objects, A will be 2 microcoulombs, B will be negative 4 microcoulombs, and C will be negative 8 microcoulombs. So if we're finding the net force on C, pretend we're standing on C, and we have to imagine what kind of attraction or repulsion would we feel from A or would we feel from B. So if C is negative 8 and A is positive 2, C would be attracted to A and C would be repelled from B because they are both negatively charged. First off, we're going to find the distance here between A and C, which we find out to be 0.36 meters. And later on, we're going to need the angle. We find that to be 56.3 degrees. So using Coulomb's law here, let's actually find the force between A and C, and let's find the force between B and C. We know between A and C it's going to be an attraction, so that red arrow, that red force, that is the correct direction that we want to draw it on. So using Coulomb's law here, we put in the two charges of the objects, divided by the separation squared, we get an answer of negative 1.11 newtons. The negative simply just means here that it's an attraction. Now let's look at the other force, which we know is going to be a repulsion between B and C. We'll call the color that blue. Let's find the length of that vector. So using Coulomb's law, um, K multiplied by the two charges divided by their separation squared, we get a value here of 7.2 newtons. So now we have that red and blue vector. All we have to do is add them up. So we'll do, do, do that using components. We need to break the red vector, red vector up into two components, one along the y and one along the x. So we need to find the overall force on the x-axis and the overall force on the y-axis and add them up. So here's the x-axis. We're going to take that force between b and c and so we're going to subtract the x component of AC. So that's 7.2 subtract 1.11 cos 56.3 which ends up being 5.6 sorry 6.58. Now looking along the y-axis the only force there is going to be the y component of the force between A and C. So it's 1.11 sine 56.3 which is 0 0.923. So the overall forces we're dealing with is one in the y 0 0.923 and one in the x, which is 6.58. So here, let's just use Pythagorean theorem to find the overall force, and we'll use Sokotoa to find the angle that that force is on. So we're putting our numbers here into the Pythagorean theorem. We find that the overall force is 6.64 newtons. Now let's find the angle. And when you put those numbers in a tan, we figure out that it's 8 degrees. So the overall force on object C is going to be 6.64 newtons forward 8 degrees up.